Hey! You're not going to find the subscribe button there. It's just under the video. What are you doing inside of my 3D printer? Click it. Now. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome back, gamers. I want to talk to you about 3D printing again. <laughs> At the minute, in the wider wargaming community, but just in general, there's a lot of talk about the cost of 3D printing. And a lot of like misconceptions, people think it's just free, you don't cost you anything, you can print as many miniatures as you like and it costs you like 50p. And that's not right. But just how cheap is it really? Well, I'm going to try and answer that today. I've got one one kilogram bottle of water washable resin. This is the Ceramic Grey by Elgu. We'll leave a link in the description. It's Links to Amazon really helps out the channel. Thanks. And I'm going to see just how many miniatures I can print with just this one bottle. I'm just going to see how far this really goes in miniatures form because that's what I'm most interested in when it comes to 3D printing. And I'm going to be doing that with just one machine as well. So this is the Elegoo Mars 3. This machine isn't out on Amazon yet. I believe you can pre-order it with Elegoo, but it's coming out on Amazon in September, I believe. This is by far the fastest printer I have in terms of print bed. I can print more miniatures on other machines at once, but this prints them faster. So I wanted to calculate like how long it would take to use a bottle of resin or how much printing time and how much I can actually get out of one bottle. We're going to be printing figures by Daybreak Miniatures, who are sponsoring today's video, a fantastic design. I'm going to tell you more about them in a little bit. But I'm going to be slicing everything with Cheetah Box Pro. In that software, it tells you how long a print will take, but it also tells you the cost or, or how much volume of resin you will use per plate. So I'm going to calculate all that and work out how close that is to actually physically printing and then weighing it at the end. Because if there's a kilogram of resin, I should get a kilogram of miniatures, right? Right. Right. So without further ado, let's let me print some stuff and tell you about it again. <laughs> We're starting off today with the Vampire Knights of Strachenhold, which are by Daybreak Miniatures. And these are only available until Tuesday on their Patreon. Let me tell you about their Patreon while we're printing them. The greatest feeling you can get in a gym or the most satisfying feeling you can get in the gym is the pump, the pump. The Daybreak Miniatures is a miniature figure Patreon that is creating high quality pre-supported printable minis for board games and RPGs. They're providing a brand new batch of characters in the first week of each month. Sven, who runs Daybreak Miniatures, is a highly skilled designer and previously a character artist with over 15 years of experience in the gaming industry. Just below the Patreon link, I've left a link to his art station as well so you can check out his past work. It's pretty impressive. This month, Daybreak Miniatures are offering the Vampire Knights of Strachenfeld, which comes with 13 miniatures in total, as well as 10 miniatures in the Welcome Pack. All the Vampire Knights have modular weapons and hands that can be shared among this release for a large variety of looks. All of the miniatures include custom bases, all pre-supported in Cheetah Box with their files, comes with the STLs, the object files and renders of each one. When you do subscribe to their Patreon, all of your files will be added to your My Mini Factory account once you do subscribe. Speaking of My Mini Factory, all of Daybreak's past release are available for purchase there, and his Patreon supporters do get a discount if you want in the older releases. So for all of that, and more miniatures each month, please check out the link in the description to Daybreak Miniatures Patreon right now to see just what's on offer. Thank you very much to Daybreak Miniatures for sponsoring today's video, and thank you at home for checking out the links of fantastic supporters of the channel. The more you check out these links, the more they're likely to work with me in the future, which helps me as well as them. Now let's end this montage and get back into the video. This first plate took about one and a half hours to print, and according to the software, it was only 93p. <laughs> this is for three miniatures, so these are like 32mm scale, very standard scale for like wargaming. I'm going to be preparing all the miniatures in the same way. Once they're printed, I'm removing them off the bed with a plastic scraper. This is a plastic blader scraper, the best thing for taking prints off and it doesn't damage your bed. And then I'm going to wash them in isopropyl alcohol for about five minutes in the Mercury X wash station. Right, look. Real talk, this is water washable resin. You can wash the resin in water. Now, that's great, that's cool, love it, good for you. I find getting rid of the contaminated water really difficult. You shouldn't run it down the sink because it can damage the environment, it can have lots of nasty effects. 
So don't do that. <laughs> Even though I'm, I'm still washing the resin in alcohol, the result of the print will be very similar if you washed it in water as well, as long as it's washed correctly. So even though I'm washing it differently, if you were to use this resin, you should get similar results as I am. So um, go watch more prints. Anyway, once they're washed up and evaporated, I then soaked the miniatures in hot water, so like hot tap water, to soften the resin. So this is like any other resins, if you wanted to bend it, it's the same thing, but this makes the getting the supports off really easily and it means it's less likely to damage because it peels rather than snaps. It was great. I then left them to dry again. I patted them down with paper towel, then left, left them to air dry. <laughs> and then I went to mercure them in the mercury for three minutes. The mercury, the mercury, it, it, it cures the models with UV, the mercury station, the mercury. After all the models were mercured, <laughs> Get it? I started my epic Doctor Strange montage to build all the models with super glue. So I built them all at the end rather than doing them one at a time. We, first off, we have Argelia Unterstracken, the cover girl of the set, Christian Prinsky, and Herrenveld von Strackenfield. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. I'm so sorry. Anyway, that was the first three models. After that, plate two. Let's go. Two hours, 25 minutes, because I've got a horse. There's a horse on there, it's great, exciting. This entire plate costs £1.47 to print. And this one has Ivana Rasner, the High Duchess, Marduka's arms, because I missed the body, and Ritter hands as well. Plate three was a little bit longer, you know, and it was 2p more expensive because we have a horse that is rearing. Hell yeah, let's go. Look at him, he's so excited, so happy. What a lot of people don't realize with resin 3D printing is that the amount of minis you have on a plate or like the area of space you actually use on the build plate doesn't make any difference to the time it'll take, only the amount of resin that's used. The time is purely affected about the height of the print. Obviously you have settings, you can change to slow it up and speed it down, but the height is the biggest factor because it's the way it builds the layers. So this one took longer because this horse is on its hind legs. So with the on the Blood Lancer and his majestic pose, he's the single tallest miniature in this set, so he takes the longest, but you can just get loads of other stuff on there at the same time. So along with him, we also printed Shima the Treacherous and Vladimir Kronak. Kronash. Oh God, I'm butchering this so bad. <laughs> Four, I went totally stupid. It took the same amount of time because I thought, oh, I don't have a Lancer, I'll print one of those. Thinking there were three horses, there's actually only two. So I print another one, why not? You know, got a spare, could use it for, if I break something, that's fine. I also started printing one of the blood wings, which are basically the big bats, which are really cool. And then plate five was supposed to be the final. I printed the other two blood wings that I hadn't printed yet and Marduka's body that I forgot about, but it actually all failed. Um, I'm not sure why. I think there must've been an issue with one of the supports, which meant the body wasn't on the plate properly. I got rid of all the failed resin, cleaned it up, washed out the tank, put it back on, re-leveled it, started again, printed it again, make sure all the supports are okay. So we got Marduka, we got the last two blood wings. I think there's an extra base on there that I missed as well early in the print. And that was the entire set. So this is the entire Vampire Knight set. Um, it took around 13 and a half hours of printing for a grand cost of seven pounds and 14 pence according to the software. So that was it, that's the entire Vampire Knights. Um, all the models are absolutely fantastic. They're all supported super well. All the bases are amazing. That's what I've kind of not really mentioned. I've printed all these miniatures. They're all on custom bases as well, uh, all, all from resin. Like I will say, um, sponsor aside, these are some of the best supported bases I've ever seen because most of the time when you resin print bases, the supports aren't very good. So you kind of get like little lips and stuff. At this point, I've spent technically £7.14. Um, I'm only a third of the way down this bottle, and it's, you know, so we use maybe like 300 grams. So we've got like another six, 700 grams to go. Um, so I went ahead, I imprinted the entire last set that they did of miniatures, which was Dwarves of the Deep. Uh, now these are, I'll be honest, some of the best looking dwarf models I've ever seen. Now you might recognise one of them, we have Hacker Imar. Now if you remember in my Mars 3 review, I actually printed the bust version, which is also on their Patreon, available on their Mind Manufactory as well. I printed the bust version of this guy because I thought he was so cool, and now I have the miniature of this guy, and it is... It is just stunning. All of these miniatures are stunning. You know, there's eight dwarves to choose from. I'm like really impressed, really blown away because they are like proper Nor Norse dwarves, which is so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. Again, these are all printed, all pre-supported, and they all come with custom bases as well. I actually printed too many bases. 
and too many shields. So I have like another seven bases. Maybe we can find Snow White and stick them on there as well. So I printed like extra bases because all of the miniatures came with two bases each. So I printed all of them. So that's great. I've printed some vampires. I've printed some dwarves. Now the dwarves use a lot less resin because they're a lot smaller. <laughs> obviously, that's fair enough. They're shorter. They were the obviously. I think the maximum time I spent printing one of the plates was like an hour and a half for these guys. So at this point, I was not even halfway down. There's only one thing to do now was to print a giant mascot for the dwarves of Imar Hacker at 175% scale, which was included with the files um, as a mascot. And also uh, 175% all bloodlands, the third bloodlancer at 175% scale as a mascot for my vampires, because I can, can now confirm that yes, bigger is better. <laughs> Look how big it is. It's so cool. I was so like, like just printing, just having a cool miniature is fine. But when you print a miniature at 175% and just having behind them, it's just like, I'm all for it. <laughs> it's very cool. So at this point, I've got an entire vampire set. I've got an entire dwarf set. I've got spare bases. I've got a spare blood lancer. I've got a giant blood lancer and I've got a giant dwarf. Contradictory, I know. I was starting to run a little bit low. I had a little bit left in the bottle. I still had a full tank. So I'm going to have to print just a little bit more <laughs> and see just how much we can get out of this bottle. So uh, let's go. Let's go print. <laughs> so I have gone ahead and printed off the entire welcome pack as well. Well, most of it. So the welcome pack it, it, for this Patreon is like a mixture of like different miniatures from other sets that have already been released by Daybreak Miniatures. So I've printed all the miniatures that I haven't printed already because there are some of the dwarves and I think one of the vampires as well. But all of these again are fantastic. Like orcs look like very like Warcrafty, which is really cool. Uh, we've got some paladins. We've got some like chaos barbarians and we've got some little orcs or goblins as well. Um, and all of these are pretty cool. And again, all on custom bases as well and at this point i'm running pretty low on resin like the bottle is empty uh, if we just have a look in the printer itself um there's only like a tiny amount of resin left uh, i could probably print maybe one or two smaller miniatures but i don't want to like risk damaging the screen or the fep in there but i'm going to stop there and i'm going to take it out and measure that and see how much is left so now i've got my very scientific uh, digital scales we're going to weigh out just how much is left so if we zero the empty bottle and then we pour in the excess resin we've not used. So I got pretty much all of it out of there. Anything else is just gonna get cleaned up with alcohol, so it will be waste. So now it's full of resin. Let's see how much we have left. Okay, so you have 138 grams left. So you're just under 90% of the actual total weight. And let's see how much we've actually got printed. We actually printed the entire vampire set, which, and also an extra blood lancer uh, for giggles. Which comes at 175 grams so far. I also printed the entire dwarf set of Dwarves of the Deep. I actually printed one of them twice by accident again. Uh, missed it two times. Uh, I printed them two times, which comes up to 230. I then printed extra bases and extra shields. I also printed 175% Imar Hacker and 175% on the Blood Lancer, which brings us up to 360 grams. And then finally, the Welcome Pack, which again, all custom models, all custom bases of varying sizes which brings us to a grand total of 493 grams of miniatures printed that are usable. Now we've got the Blood Lancer who I haven't built, we've got extra bases that are usable. I guess these two dwarf shields you would count as wasted. So I call that 492 grams, plus the 138 that I've not actually printed with. So that gives us 630 grams so far. So where's the rest? <laughs> well, obviously they're the miniatures, but we have all the support material and all the fails which comes out to 303 grams, giving us a grand total of 933 grams. So there's 70 grams missing. So now I've printed as much as I can. Um, obviously this is quite a lot now. So the total print time, according to T2Box, I haven't timed this to make sure it's right, but according to T2Box, there was 31 hours and 40 minutes of print time in total for everything. I think there's like 13, plates in total to print everything which according to the software cost for the miniatures 17 pounds and 24 pence for this bottle of resin which isn't far off to be honest this bottle of resin like fluctuates between like 30 and 35 pounds on amazon quality on amazon is 33 pounds and 15 pence to buy one of these so it's on offer again link in the description so to say we had 492 grams of models printed that are usable, and if this bottle cost 33 pounds and 15 pence, then we actually spent 16 pounds 30 
to print these models. Like that's how much he's on the board right now, uh, which is actually not far off. He's a pound less than T2 Box initially said. I think it was set up to be £32.50 because it was like in the middle of what we paid for it. So it overestimated and it worked out even cheaper. Hooray! <laughs> the problem was is what it didn't take into account is this. Uh, the 303 grams of support material that is just going to end up in landfill and there's actually 10 pounds and four pence worth of waste material sat here that's just going to go in the bin so each mini roughly cost me currently a pound each you know including the giant ones because we have around 30 miniatures we have 32 if you include the giant ones we have we could probably get a few more out of this bottle as i said we could probably get like a small handful of dwarves so we could probably get like maybe 35 to 40 miniatures out of one bottle at this like 28 to 32 mil scale with some bigger stuff to represent let's say some larger units but we are missing about 70 grams of resin uh which i can only put down to either the bottle not being perfect or more, what's more likely is like the waste resin that is on the miniatures when they get cleaned when i had to filter it obviously resin was wasted there and you know when you you move models and it drips off etc so if you wanted to take off every last drop before cleaning them you probably could to save a little bit more resin but it's not really worth it but you are waste i have wasted like 70 grams which is like nearly 10 percent of the bottle so nearly three pounds worth of resin is literally just sat in my tank of ipa now um which will never get used but to answer the original question of the whole point of this video is how cheap is 3d printing well, on paper, it's pretty cheap. I've just told you that I've printed 32 models and some bases, and it's cost me less than a pound each, really. And I have some resin spare. However, that's only considering the actual resin. It's not considering the price of a machine, which can vary between 250 to 500 pounds if you wanted to buy a good one and nice rip like a reputable brand it doesn't include the wash and cure station obviously you make those yourself i've actually got a video coming out uh, sometime soon regarding making your washing cure station and then that's not considering all the consumables such as gloves which are cheap on their own but they, you do go through quite a few of them you need isopropyl alcohol as well i think in that tub there's like seven liters so you can do the maths on that one which does all add up but it does keep it pretty cheap still the biggest cost really is technically free, but it is time. Now, I probably spent like maybe 20 to 30 minutes per plate, so per print, to make sure that all the models are arranged correctly, make sure all the supports are right, make sure they were going to print, make sure it was all okay. And these were all pre-supported pretty much. The bases weren't for the dwarves, and some of the bases for them in the welcome pack I actually rearranged so they weren't printing flat for the bed. But this is like relatively quick for prints. But there were 13 plates in total, so that's 13 times 20 minutes. You know, that's quite a lot of time spent just prepping prints and not really having miniatures. It's purely all software. Now I quite enjoy it. It's it's part of the hobby for me. But if you are thinking about getting a resin printer to aid all the hobbies, that's what you kind of have to be aware of. It's not a case of just pressing go. It's quite um, time intensive to set up. The, the printer to make it run you know but once it's running then you can just leave it you know if it takes four hours for a print once it's actually running you make sure it's working and then you just leave it for four hours and you, have, you get you do it again straight after <laughs> but these are all very well supported and not all miniatures out there are so a lot of them don't come supported at all which you do have to work at yourself so you might be spending up to an hour maybe two hours supporting a miniature before printing it but really at the end of the day it's not a quick task to print this many miniatures but 3d printing is cheaper eventually <laughs> hope this video has helped you maybe it's answered a couple of questions that you might have had maybe you've just seen some cool models that you might like um, i certainly have i think these models are great but if it has helped you or you did enjoy it at all please consider liking the video and subscribing for more because i do cover 3d printing as well as warhammer and other tabletop games as well massive shout out to daybreak miniatures they are absolutely fantastic and they support creators like me to make content like this for you guys at home um, so do go and check them out i'll leave all the links in the description for their patreon their mind mini factory etc i'm really big fan of these miniatures i am a patreon myself now which isn't part of the deal <laughs> that's just side note i actually subscribed myself <laughs> um, so please if you can go check them out go check out the amazing miniatures fanny's an absolutely amazing designer clearly um, he has some real talent and it really shows in these minutes massive shout out to you guys at home for watching uh, i really appreciate it you're all amazing and thank you for always listening to my rambles about random things i'm doing at home but that's it that's all i've got for you so thank you very much like and subscribe do all the things and hopefully i'll catch you in the next one bye bye now